Hi friends, welcome back to our chapter book reading time. Let's read chapter nine. Chapter nine on page 70, more sour notes. Over the next few days, the most amazing things began to happen. First of all, large white sheets of cardboard turned into great big snowflakes that the girls could fasten onto their bodies by putting their arms through elastic loops. Smaller snowflakes went onto their wrists like bracelets. Second, long pieces of colorful yarn, yarn were woven together into handsome tails for boys. They also wore caps and paper ears on them, with paper ears on them. By Thursday, the girls learned to swirl around like snowflakes as they sang, snowflakes floating through the air make a lovely sight. No two snowflakes are alike, almost, but not quite. They looked wonderful, especially Rolling Rosie, who could spin her wheelchair in perfect circles. Meanwhile, the boys learned to prance while they sang, dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. But there were problems, too. One day, things got wild, wild, wild. The tall Paul pranced right into Be Careful Kelsey and Forgetful Phoebe, almost knocked over small Paul when she swirled out of control. Just Joey pranced over to my cage. Look, Humphrey, I'm a horse, he said. Then he made a weird noise that sounded a lot like a horse. Whee! Or something like that. I think it's called a whinny. I've never actually seen a horse in real life, but I once saw an amazing movie at Mrs. Brisbane's house that had a lot of people riding on the backs of enormous horses. At least they looked enormous to me. Do it again, Joey, I squeaked. Guess what? He did. Whee! Hurry up, Harry, and slow down, Simon heard him and rushed right over. That was amazing, Harry said. How did you do that? Simon wanted to know. Joey did it again. Harry and Simon tried to whinny too, but they didn't sound like horses at all. Settle down, class, back to your seats, Miss Lark said. Now, girls, you'll be decorating your snowflakes with paint first, then glitter. Boys, you need to finish your ears and tails. I'll bring in jingle bells for you to practice with as well. All of my friends seemed to forget seemed so excited and pleased. I was too. Daniel, why don't we try the song one time with you playing the Jingle Bells music, Miss Lark asked. Now, Daniel said. Yes, now, Miss Lark replied. Daniel shuffled his way to the front of the room where Miss Lark had her keyboard. I'm not used to playing on that, he said. I know, Miss Lark said, but it's just a piano. It's just like a piano, and we'll have a real piano for the show. She placed the music near the keyboard, and Daniel took his place. I'll count to four, Miss Lark said. On the count of four, you'll start playing. And remember to follow my direction. Daniel nodded. One, two, three, Miss Lark counted. Four. I was relieved when Daniel started to play and the boys started to sing. Following Miss Lark's hands as she waved them, before long I realized something was wrong, wrong, wrong. The boys sang dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh, but by the time they were singing sleigh, Daniel was still playing the note for snow. Not only that, it was the wrong note. It sounded so terrible, my ears twitched and my whiskers wiggled. Eek, I squeaked. No one could hear me. Of course, because there was so much noise. Miss Lark kept waving her arms. Over the fields we go, the boys sang, but Daniel played in a one-horse open sleigh. He had a couple more clunkers, too. I never knew how bad music sounded if someone hit the wrong notes. And then there was this another sound. The girls were giggling. I didn't blame them. Daniel wasn't laughing, though. He turned red, and there was a look of panic on his face. Stop, Miss Lark said. Daniel froze, and everyone stopped singing. Sorry, Daniel, but you need to keep up with the boys, Miss Lark said. It sounded as if you were performing two different songs. They were going too fast, Daniel complained. I know it's difficult to play while people sing if you're not used to it, the teacher said. Have you practiced at home? Daniel rubbing his nose. Sort of, he mumbled. I hope you will spend some time practicing this weekend, Miss Lark said. We'll try again on Monday. Daniel shuffled his way back to his chair. He looked so miserable, the girl stopped giggling. Miss Lark left Mrs. Brisbane and, took, and Mrs. Brisbane took over the class, but Daniel didn't look any happier. And when the class left for recess, I heard Simon say to Harry, I hear piano players run in his family. Run far away, I hope, Harry replied with a laugh. 
which was kind of funny, except that it was true. Later in the day, Mrs. Brisbane let my friends work on their costumes. The girls seemed especially excited to make their snowflakes get glitter. But before they got started, Mrs. suddenly Mrs. Wright walked into room 26. Mrs. Wright is the PE teacher who always wears a shiny and loud whistle around her neck. She also likes to make sure that everyone at Longfellow School follows the rules. Mrs. Brisbane, I want to alert you that there is there will be no glitter at the Winter Wonderland program, she said. Some of the girls gasped. Oh no, Sophie said out loud. I held my breath as Mrs. Wright put her hand on the whistle. I crossed my paws and hoped she wouldn't blow it because hamsters are, have very sensitive ears. Oh, but we need to make our snowflakes sparkle, my teacher said. We were just about to start. Mrs. Wright shook her head. I'm sorry, but at our other planning, at our planning meeting, we decided there would be no glitter. It's too much extra work for Aldo, and I don't want to find glitter in my gymnasium for the rest of the year. You do have a point, Mrs. Brisbane said. I certainly don't want to make Aldo's job harder. Aldo works hard. I know. I watch him every night of the week as he sweeps, dusts, and mops our room. I didn't want him to have extra work either, but I hated to see the girls looking so unhappy. Thank you for your cooperation, Mrs. Wright said. I'm sure we will have a perfectly nice glitter-free program. After Mrs. Wright left, the girls are all started talking. It's not fair, be careful, Kelsey complained. We need glitter to make our snowflakes shiny, Rolling Rosie said. I'll sweep the gym, helpful Holly said. I'll make sure there's not one single piece of glitter left behind. Mrs. Brisbane smiled. Mrs. Wright has a point. There are other ways to make your snowflakes shiny. I'll think of something. Now, back to learning. The girls didn't seem convinced, but soon Mrs. Brisbane was talking about something coming up called the winter solstice, which is the shortest day of the year. Since I'm usually wide awake at night, I thought an extra long night would be fun, fun, fun. On Friday, the girls were a lot happier as they glued shiny shapes made of tin foil on their snowflakes, and they were as sparkly as could be. That afternoon, do it now, Daniel said, Humphrey, it's my turn to take you home for the weekend. People like Fridays. I guess it's because they have a whole weekend ahead of them. I love Fridays, too, because I get to go home with a classmate and learn something new about humans. What I don't like about Fridays is leaving Og behind. He stays alone in room 26 because he doesn't have to be fed. And transporting his tank is more difficult than carrying my cage. While Daniel waited for his grandfather to pick him up, I told Og I'd see him soon. Have a good weekend, I said. Boing, boing, he answered. It sounded as if he was going to miss me. Mrs. Brisbane stood looking out the window at the gray sky. You know what, she said. I wasn't sure who she was talking to, but I squeaked up anyways. What? I'm taking you home for the weekend, Og, she continued. It feels like snow and I don't want you to you to get stuck here in case school is closed on Monday. I guess she remembered the time Og and I got snowed in. It was scary, scary, scary to be alone at school with no one to feed us or give us water. I was happy, happy, happy for Og. Now I can enjoy the weekend knowing he'd have fun too. After the rest of the class had gone home, Daniel's grandfather arrived. Grandpa, meet Humphrey, Daniel said as the old man came in. Mrs. Brisbane introduced herself to Mr. Pop Popwell, which was grandpa's real name. Grandpa Popwell wore a heavy plaid jacket and a funny hat with flaps that came down over his ears. Maybe those flaps kept him from hearing too well because he said, nice to meet ya, Bizbane. Mrs. Bizbane, I mean Mrs. Brisbane, helped grandpa Popple. Popwell covered my cage with a blanket and carry it out. Bye, Og. Have a great weekend, I squeaked to my friend. I already knew he would since he was going home with Mrs. Brisbane. Boing, boing, he answered happily. It looks as if we'll have the house to ourselves for a few days, the old man said as we drove away from school. Your mom has a conference. I know, Daniel said, and Dad, Dad's out of town. Just you and me, Grandpa said, the boys. Just you and me and Humphrey, Daniel reminded him. He's a boy too, but not Lulu. She's a girl. I heard Grandpa chuckle. I wasn't sure who Lulu was. Maybe Daniel had a sister. Once we were at Daniel's house, the blanket came off my cage. Right away, I knew who Lulu was because she started barking. That's right, Lulu was a dog and she was barking at me. 
She was a small dog with curly black fur, but even if she was small for a dog, she was still a lot bigger than I am. And when she barked, I could see some very white, sharp teeth. Settle down, Lulu, Grandpa Popwell told her. She didn't settle down. Lulu, be nice, Daniel said, but Lulu wasn't nice. I'll put her in the den, Daniel said, and he carried her out of sight. Thank goodness. Friends, this is the last page of chapter nine. My heart was still pounding, but once Lulu was gone, I looked around and saw that I was sitting on a table in the living room. And right across the room was a piano. I certainly hoped that Daniel was planning on practicing all weekend. Daniel and Grandpa went into the kitchen for a snack, so I scratched around my bedding and found a small piece of broccoli I'd stored in there. I like to save bits of food in case some humans forget to feed me, but this hasn't happened yet. When they came back to the living room, Grandpa said, Do you have any homework to do, Daniel? Daniel made a face. It's Friday. I've been working all week. I'll do it later this weekend. Can we watch TV? Your mother said she didn't want us watching TV all weekend, he said. Oh, and she said you need to practice piano for the show at school. I'll practice, Daniel said. I was glad to hear that because from the way he played at rehearsal, he needed lots of practice. Later, Daniel said. He said later a lot. Is it okay if I read a while, Daniel asked. Sure, his grandfather answered, and I'll finish that crossword puzzle I started this morning. I crossed my paws and hoped that when Daniel practiced later, it wouldn't be too late. Humphrey's Winter Wonderings. If you say later every time you need to do something, do you ever actually get that thing done? Hmm. All right, my friends, that is our last chapter for this week. We will read chapter 10 on page 80 on Monday. I hope you guys have a great weekend. Bye.